Hey Copa fam, remember this? It's Boca vs. River, the biggest derby ever, the mother of all episodes, and here's what you didn't see. Hey Copa fam, it's Tino here. You might know me for some past documentaries on Copa 90, but most of the time, what you don't know is I'm producing Derby Days. So I'm sitting down with the man himself, Ellie Menjum, to take a look back at some greatest moments here on Derby Days Diaries. Episode 1, Buenos Zaires. So well, um, the Super Classico. Starting with the big one. It's considered the Derby of all Derbies. It's the big one, and it's the reason we didn't do it. Despite doing five years of Derby Days, I said I'm not doing it. Super Classico was just a no-go until we could find something bigger than the Copa Libertadores semi-final that Vice covered so well, and I just, that was it for me. It was not going to happen. And then, obviously, late October 2018, and we all know what happens. I mean, I, I still remember Santi, who's part of the film. I've Opening line of the film. Imagine um, Barcelona and Real Madrid meeting in the final of the Champions League times 100. He sends me this text and he goes, I don't want to alarm you, but there is the chance <laughs> that the single biggest club match in the history of South American football will go down in November. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, Boca and River have both mm. made the semis. Boca beat Palmeiras at, at, but River still, River lost or they drew or something. So it's like, well, River aren't going to go to Gremio. And, beat, and beat them. That was the one. Yeah, that, that was, was the, the one. one that we were like, fucking Gremio, don't screw us. Boca got through, but River still had to beat Gremio in Gremio in that second leg, and it just wasn't going to happen. River only got in through a last minute penalty and the coach sneaking in the dressing room at half time. Yeah, yeah, they, they're like, because Gallardo, Gallardo wasn't allowed oh. to be in the stadium, and Gallardo like, snuck did, into the dressing room. He whatever he wants. Yeah, 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 yeah Gallardo yeah, yeah. snuck <laughs> in the dressing room. We were yeah. texting on a Wednesday. Yeah. At like two or Thursday at like three in the morning, we were texting each other. Like, is this gonna happen? Holy shit, it's happened, it's happened. We get to the office on the Thursday. Yeah. On the Thursday, we're like, wait, we were gonna buy tickets, but then the shit about Gallardo comes out, so we don't actually know if it's gonna happen or not. So we ended up having to wait until the Friday to get the flight. And on Tuesday AM, we were in Buenos Aires for three and a half weeks. <laughs> we had such little time and there was so much to fit in. I took literally a good bag full of magazines all about the Derby, all my old 442s, World Soccer. We get on the plane, I'm already handing them out. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie likes to have his crew have fucking required reading, okay, as if we're not all interested you should be well in the Derby. Yeah, I'm well informed, you, you asshole. Should... I watched the whole documentary oh, series called Inchadas, right, where I downloaded no, the whole... No, you didn't. You fucking sat and watched Dr. Doolittle or some... You watched Guardians of the Galaxy. Have he wakes me up 10 minutes before no, landing, yeah. fucking screaming no, 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 in my no, no, ear no, no, that no, I haven't read the magazine. Shit. You're talking shit. Screaming don't, at me, Don't man. get me It's angry. been a 20-hour flight. You know what the best part is, though? That whole feeling is encompassed in the shot that you put in the movie of when we're walking through the doors yeah. of the airport, right? And you see me like... That's yeah. not because I'm overwhelmed knew... by the flight. That's because I'm about to turn around and fucking smack you so hard. We land on the Wednesday. This is my favorite story. I mean, the guy who kind of appears most in the film is... Diego. Diego, the, oh, the taxi driver. Diego. Now, this is the beautiful moment about this, is that... Diego was night one of when we filmed that Wednesday night. Yeah. And it's, I remember, I'll never forget, I don't know, people talk about like kind of fate. We were waving taxi down after taxi down. We could have, there were so many taxis that went past. It was after the hairdressers. And we happened to wave his, and that hairdresser, I mean, we just landed, we're jet lagged, we'd done one interview already for an hour at the hairdressers. And I told the cameraman, put down the cameras, we're done tonight, we'll go again tomorrow. We get, hop in the car, get in the taxi, it's Diego. Like I always do, I start asking the taxi driver, not expecting to film it. And then he says that line about how his granddaughter's communion's on the Saturday. But there's no way he's going to it because it's it's the game, and neither is the dad of the daughter. I told him I'm not going to the church. Afterwards, I'll prepare the asado for the party, but I'm not going to the church. I'm staying and watching the game. And I remember just turning to Johnny, one of the cameramen, and being like, "You're going to, have to get the camera out of the bag," and he's already filming it on the iPhone. He's captured him like on his little iPhone, and I'm like, "Yes, we got that." And then as we're back together, the car, we're all saying goodbye. I'm like, "Hold on." Grab him, grab his number. Mm. We'll give him a bit of extra cash and I want to see how he is on, on the Sunday after the game. And then that led to this idea of like following up with people. And then match day one, it's that Saturday. I'll never forget, we had filmed that night before we'd filmed your Boca contacts and that amazing party with the giant roast pork. And we had a drone going and everything. Remember that? That, that was, was the night the, before day one. That was the night before I never forget, day one. They, drove, they were so nice, they drove us all the way home, back into the city. And I remember turning to you and saying, because you had organized a stadium tour of the Boca Stadium to Amstel. I'll never forget waking up. You had already done the stadium tour with Johnny or someone had already done it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember waking up, getting out of bed. It was a normal night that night before. And then just seeing that text like, yo, 
the rain has not stopped. And I'm like, they're like, there might even be a, there yeah, might even so be a cancellation. This, we got to the stadium at like 7.30 in the morning and like you couldn't do anything. Like it was, it was epic. Like, it was like something I'd never seen. It was like walking constantly through a giant shower. Like, I slept through it. And there was like fucking mayhem everywhere. And there's something so sweet about Buenos Aires and the neighborhood of La Boca as like they're trying to get together for the greatest game of their lives on the biggest day of their lives. And everything is going to shit. Fuck, <laughs> man, I'm... Fuck this, oh, fuck this. We couldn't even go near the stadium because it was so flooded. We had to hide in the garage. And while we're hiding in the garage, all this footage of this, we're hiding in one of these garages and like there's some scary guys looking at us. They find out from Australia, they start showing us these memes. <laughs> and I'm like, I came here for a derby and I've ended up in a garage looking at memes. What's this? What is this? <laughs> anyway, I mean, we got into the stadium. Someone started telling me the game's on Wednesday. Now I was like, what? Then I was hearing tomorrow. And I was like, let's just go out, let's just go out into that stadium and experience what it's like. I'll never forget walking out to that. Again, apocalyptic rain. And I mean, I, I just, I started crying. Like I, you can see it, like there's moments. The way those Boca fans were bouncing and singing in the rain, they were singing as if there was like a pain in their voice. Like, it, like everything that you go through in Argentina or the whatever conditions they live in or work in, or everything that was hard in them, they, the way they were singing, it's like, it was like a church choir. They were mm. singing their pains away. They were singing the fact that their biggest game had been canceled. And I remember just being like, this is not a normal derby days. Yeah. For the chaos that that was, I can't believe that that was the easy day. So match day one doesn't happen. It's moved to the Sunday, the mm -hmm. next day, which is match day, uh, Boca River. So finally we have a game. Remember, I remember the next day I was like, well, it's not gonna be ready tomorrow. The ball didn't move as if that pitch is gonna, the next day you wake up, and it's just perfect. A perfect sunny day. It was insane. I remember that Boca game. I know, yes, I spoke about how the day before I'd had that moment, but the second day we had pitch side access for 10 minutes before the game. And I was like, that's where we do the opening line shot. And they just would not let us. They just said, no, they were adamant that our passes didn't get through. And I fought, and because we got there quite a few hours early because of what had happened the day before. And I argued with him. And I remember Johnny said, oh, give up. It's not going to happen. And I just kept going. And then he literally, he didn't speak any English. My Spanish was. Yeah, not great. And then I, essentially, I pushed it. I pushed it, and then he just broke. And he's like, "You got ten minutes." And I know I spoke yesterday about how walking out had the goosebumps. Us, Johnny, us, Josh. They've done just as many crazy matches as me. We walked out. It was like oh, who said Johnny? Like the Coliseum. They they walked you through this tunnel. It wasn't the place. It was a side pitch. They open this giant glass thing that stops the fans getting on. Go ahead. And as we walk out, we're like. Because the box is like almost like Fallon Park. You walk and you, the gr the fans are actually lower than the ground, mm -hmm. so you kind of walk up and people are banging on this glass thing. It's like you're being thrown into the Coliseum, and that is to this day the most amount of goosebumps we've ever had. Derby Day Super Classico, the first and possibly only ever as a Copa Libertadores final. I can't I waited for the right Derby days. That was the moment I knew we'd done it. Then obviously there's the game. The game goes amazing, 2-2 two, two results. Now you remember that, here's the thing, the crazy bit, we didn't put it this in, and again, we filmed this part. Bok got 1-0. Uh -huh. The maddest goal celebrations you've ever seen. They celebrated so hard, they broke the steel rail off. They broke it off. And I, I remember thinking, this, is, this really is the next level. So the match ends 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. We didn't know it was 2-2. Two, two. I know, you As say like, it ends 2-1 in yeah. the original league. All right, full time at the Bombonera, but only half time for this incredible Super Classico series. Yes, Boko up 2 1. No, no, hold on. It's 2 1. It's 2 all. I'm telling you, it's 2 all. I'm proud that you made zero noise. Dos, one, dos, I've been in. Because there's a rule when, when a team is passionate as Boko, if the team isn't winning, with the exception of 0 0, maybe, you don't film. Because if, even if it's a draw, you people just don't pitched. film. Yeah, yeah. I was in their faces and I was wondering why people give me a look. I was thinking, you're winning. Why are you being. So I didn't realize it was 2-2. Two, two. Um, literally, you guys are joking, they're like, no, no, no. Obnoxiously filming people in like yeah. the most tense moments of their lives. Thinking like, they're enjoying Congratulations, mate. You, you won 2-1, two, <laughs> it was 2-2. Two, two. So then there's that match day from hell, the big one, in which what was supposed to be the most exciting football match of our lives turned into probably the most stressful day of our entire lives. Um, How yeah. did that play out for you? I remember thinking, this game can't end here. One of the entrances for where the fans get in is this long street, which you had to have a ticket to get down, but dodgy people were going down that street who obviously had tickets. 
And we walked down, and I remember at one stage, we, these guys were eyeing us off, and I remember thinking, why have they left that street? Why can't fans walk down that one? And they're like, well, that's where the bus will go down. I was like, the bus? I mean, fans can't walk down it, but we can literally we can touch the bus if it goes down there. And I do a line, I'm like... The Boca Juniors bus is coming down this street, right next to River fans, and going in this way. There's lines of police. I don't see how they're going to be, hold, be able to stop trouble happening. And we were going to wait for the bus, and I thought, no, we've got to get in. We got in early, got to be around the pitch. Long story short, um, you, that, that, the bus gets attacked. I'll never forget getting that call from you. A lot of people think it's fake. You were calling me, and I could barely hear you. And I was like, what, what are you saying? And it was like, gas, gas attack, the game's kept, the game's kept. And we couldn't hear properly. No one, you, you were the first person to tell me. You had written a text, but it didn't make sense. So we called you, we could barely, barely hear you. And I was just like, there's no way. And what people, don't, we were in the stadium, no one had internet. We had the media, we, yeah, Wi-Fi. Okay. So we were able to kind of get some reception from you. I'll never forget thinking, why are these guys singing though? If they knew what was going on outside, they'd be furious. Because you were already saying, they're saying the game's cancelled, Boca don't want to play. And you literally watched every 10 minutes, another section got more and more quiet. And it got quieter and quieter. And the, the cops kept saying, no, 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 the game's still going ahead. It's been delayed now because they wanted to keep people safe. Meanwhile, so everyone's sitting there just waiting in the sun, getting hotter and hotter. It's midday or whatever. Meanwhile, we're, media's been taken off the field now, just thrown into the dungeons of the stadium, just wait there, and it's just chaos. You can see this. We walk past the smashed up bus. The Boca player who's injured goes out. He comes in. The journalists are type. It was just While chaos. this is all ensuing, I'm in a car park with Pepe and El Colo, another cameraman that we'd hired to give us an extra hand filming stuff for the Boca Juniors fans. And Copa 90 has me corresponding with CNN as the number one correspondent to CNN. At one point, I'm live on CNN World Sport. As of now, everyone is saying it will 100% kick off at 7.15. All right, that, that's, uh, but, yeah, that's about oh, seven or eight minutes, now, go on. No, now they've just told me it's gonna be delayed by 30 minutes or 45 minutes. The game's gonna be at five, no at six. Sirs, this is Buenos Aires, and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> we went out for a break, we needed air. We went out to this section that was still part of the stadium, but outside and um, we're doing a link, and then Tapia, the head of the Argentina FA, walks out into the car park. I said, was that Tapia? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, we should, why is he leaving? The game started in 15 minutes. And I was like, I was so angry that I didn't film that. And then I just see another crew of suits walking out, and I'm like, that's Infantino. I'm running full power. Come on, come on. We had barely any battery left. To catch up with Infantino, you could see he's just like, who is this kid chasing me? Johnny. Did you get him? Did yeah. you get Johnny? Did you get the bold guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's and that's so when I knew, when Infantino hopped in that car, I knew there is no game, they're lying to the people. Post-match that River game, the thing that summed it up for me, the moment of all Derby Day, that sort of thing is this day. The one thing that's going more viral than the, the horrible scenes is this one guy who's speaking common sense and decency. And he's going, um, my, mo my brother's a River fan. My brother's a Boca fan. He's a River fan. He's the voice of reason for the whole nation of Argentina at this point, right? And Johnny's like, no, 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 no. That guy, hold on. We scroll back, and before the match, we've got him. Boca, la concha de tu madre, Boca, la concha. You can, you can. Four times he does it in your mother's pussy, Boca. Four times he screams. He's, he's on top about, of a bus stop or something. He's talking about his brother being a Boca fan. Literally five hours later. In even these moments of peace and rationality yeah. and decency, Argentina still sometimes lacked it when it came to football. Why we do Madrid is because. This was the final of the biggest competition in South America, a tournament named after the Liberators. And now you're gonna host your biggest ever football tournament, the most popular cultural pastime of South America, back in the capital of Spain. For me, it's a complete contradiction. It shouldn't have happened. For me, the ultimate way it would have ended with no one gets to win it, I thought that would have been the most beautiful thing. The biggest derby of all time can't even be decided due to the hatred. That for me is how it should have ended. That, in my opinion, is how it ended. That's my opinion, as a neutral as well. well going out to Madrid, I can tell you, it was day and night. Yeah, it wasn't you know, the same there's, thing. There's Buenos Aires and the passion there, and, and as close as we can get in Europe. The, the Super Classico was magical. Cheers, good fight. What's next? Hamburg? Austria. Hamburg, and then Madrid. Madrid. Madrid, I want to eat. He's going to cop it in Madrid. <laughs>